This is a video from Chapter 3 in regards to Avogadro's number and the molar mass of an element. These two concepts are very important when it comes to counting atoms, ions, molecules, electrons, protons, neutrons, any chemical unit. Yes, we need to be able to count chemical units no matter what they are. The difficulty with counting chemical units is, one, that they're very, very small. So physically, we cannot actually count them individually by actually picking apart one, two, three, etc. Another problem is that even in the smallest quantity, even if you pick a quantity which you on a macroscopic level see as being very, very small, ends up being a huge, huge quantity of those chemical units. And so therefore, it's impossible to count them. Another reason why we want to be able to count chemical units is in terms of chemical reactions. We want, to, we want to be able to make predictions about if we start out with a certain amount of reactant, how much product will form, or if we have a certain amount of product formed in mind, how much reactant will we need to produce it. And so these applications are significant in terms of being able to count atoms, molecules, ions, or any other chemical unit. So the first thing we have to do is define a counting unit for chemistry. And the counting unit for chemistry is the mole. We have other counting units that we use in our normal everyday life, such as dozen. If I say to you dozen, the dozen is a word that means 12. Everybody knows what a dozen is. And don't even get me started on the baker's dozen. You know, the baker's dozen 13. You know, always somebody picks that up. What about the baker's dozen, Mr. Crisanti? Anyway, the dozen is 12. You go somewhere, everybody knows what you're saying. You won't go to Dunkin' Donuts, you say you want a dozen donuts, you want a dozen bagels, you go to some other bakery, you want a dozen muffins. Everybody knows what you're talking about. A pair. A pair is always two. We have a pair of shoes. So we know that a pair of shoes means that you get two shoes, one left one, obviously, and one right one. So pair and dozen are counting quantities. They are words that mean a certain specific number, a certain counting quantity. The mole is the amount of a substance that contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in exactly 12.00 grams of carbon-12. Carbon with a mass number of 12. A mole is defined as the number of atoms, the quantity of atoms that there are of carbon-12 in 12 grams of carbon-12. One mole which is given the symbol Na, which stands for Avogadro's number, is 6.0221367 times 10 to the 23rd. So, that is the quantity equivalent to 12 grams of carbon-12. Avogadro's number, Na. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of eggs, shoes, marbles, atoms, in grams. Well, I have to disagree with the egg shoes and the marbles. I will go with the atoms, though, because as it turns out, the mole can really only be used or only be applied to chemical units or some type of scientific unit. We don't really use the word mole in terms of everyday things like egg shoes and marbles, but when we talk about chemical units like atom molecules, um, ions, photons, neutrons, protons, and electrons, it is appropriate to use the idea of the mole and the molar mass. So the molar mass is the mass of one mole of atoms in grams. But it's also true for molecules or ions or anything else. One mole of carbon-12 atoms and equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, excuse me, which is equal to 12 grams. Therefore, one carbon-12 atom has a mass of 12 AMUs. Remember from your previous reading that an AMU stands for Atomic Mass Unit and is a relative mass scale which carbon-12 was assigned the mass of 12 AMUs, and then all other isotopes can be compared to that of carbon-12, and their mass is determined. 
one mole of carbon-12 atoms has a mass of 12 grams. One mole of lithium atoms has a mass of 6.941 grams. For any element, the atomic mass in AMUs is equal to the molar mass in grams. So if you look at the periodic table and you find the atomic mass of an element in atomic mass units, if you measure that out in grams, you will have one mole of that particular element. And remember, one mole, the word the mole, is a word that means the counting quantity 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So here we have one mole of carbon, one mole of copper, one mole of iron, one mole of sulfur, and one mole of mercury. You can see that they're all different sizes, they're all different quantities because their densities are different and their masses are different. Each of these substances has a different atomic mass and so there'll be more or less of a particular element because its atomic mass is different. So, one carbon-12 atom has a mass of 12 AMUs. We're going to take that and we're going to multiply it times the fact that 12 grams of carbon-12 has a quantity of 6.022 times 10 to the third carbon-12 atoms. And then we're going to multiply it times the fact that 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th, I'm sorry, we didn't multiply that. We said that where they are equal to each other. My mistake. When you multiply 1 over 12 times the 12 over 6.022, what we've developed here is the mass in grams that is equivalent to 1 AMU. So 1 AMU is equivalent to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. And we got that by taking the fact that one carbon-12 atom has a mass of 12 AMUs and that one mole of carbon atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon-12 atoms, has a mass of 12 grams. See, when the units cancel, and we get 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams per 1 AMU. So 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams, or 1 gram is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs. We can use the mole to go back and forth between the mass of an element to the number of moles of element to the number of atoms. And we can go from the number of atoms to the number of moles of an element to the mass of an element. So that's what this depicts here. These boxes are basically are showing us how we can use Avogadro's number, the mole, and the mass of one mole to convert from element mass to element moles to number of atoms and the reverse. So if one takes the mass of an element, a given quantity, 20 grams, 100 grams, 30 grams, whatever you're given, and divides it by the molar mass, which is this fancy M right here. So we take the mass, divide it by the molar mass, we get the number of moles of that particular element. We take the number of moles of that particular element, if we multiply it times the Avogadro's number, we'll get the number of atoms. If we take the number of atoms and divide it by the Avogadro's number, we can go from the number of atoms to the number of moles. And if we take the number of moles and multiply it times the molar mass, we get the mass of the element in grams. Like I always say, moles to grams you multiply. See? Moles to grams you multiply. And grams to moles divide. Corny. I know. Remember, that fancy M is the molar mass in grams per mole, and Na is the Avogadro's number. Alright, so let's look at that problem. How many atoms are in 0.551 grams of potassium? Well, it turns out one mole of potassium has a mass of 39.10 grams, and remember that's the atomic mass measured in grams from the periodic table. One mole of potassium is also equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of potassium. So by definition, that's a mole. If you had to take the 0.551 grams of potassium, and you multiply it times one mole over 39.10 grams, looks very familiar, should be something that you've seen last year in physics. 
Some teachers called it wobbing, some teachers did not. But basically, we see that we took this relationship right here, we took this relationship right there, converted it to a fraction, and we made sure that the same units were on the bottom, so they would cancel, and when we multiply those twos out, we would get the answer in mole. We like to combine um, different analyses so that we're not just getting doing a calculation and then getting an answer and then doing another calculation to get an answer. Let's just plug in all the numbers at once. So we combine the analysis, the dimensional analysis, because remember, we want to know how many atoms there are in 0.551 grams. Here, we only converted it to moles. Grams is going to cancel with grams. So we want to go from moles now to atoms. So we take our second dimensional, or our second equivalent, turn it into a fraction, and of course with the moles on the bottom here and here so that they cancel each other out. And then we multiply those out, and we see that the grams are going to cancel and the moles are going to cancel. And we multiply them out, and we get 8.49 times 10 to the 21st potassium atoms. And so you can see we can convert grams to moles and then moles to atoms because we know that one mole is the quantity 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and that the mass of one mole of any element can be found on the periodic table by taking its atomic mass and atomic mass units and then make, turning it into grams. Okay, that's the end of this video. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, if it's not, be feel free to ask questions. Uh, take a look in the book if you need to. And we'll see you in September. Bye.